By the way, I don't know if you saw the episode last night. Please watch it on demand of uh, Believe Again. Tonight is the second and final episode of that. And tomorrow night, is, is tomorrow night, is that Thursday, right? Yeah, tomorrow night is uh, the episode of um, In Search of Grandpa's Christmas, which uh, you will see, actually, because we filmed this weeks ago. You will see Tanya and I sitting um, at the ranch having a conversation about the goals for the new year and I look at her and I say I need your help I need to be a better man next year and I want Rafe and I to be able to do this together and I don't know how to do it and I think I came home that next week and this book was on my desk and I have read it I've been reading it every night since um, and it is just it's tremendous um, so we only have just a few minutes, and I don't know where to, to go here because I have so much. Um, I, I guess what I... Um, let, me, let, me, let me first start with this. In the book, you give, you know, things to do. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> I want to do it with my son, but I also want my... And my son-in-law, the three mm -hmm. of us are going to do it together. Good. Um, and... Uh, um, but I also want my wife and my daughters to be involved. Mm -hmm. And my wife said in this special, I think, um, she said, well, I want to find some women that I can emulate. Mm -hmm. Is there, do you know of, do you know, does this work? Do you think this would work f for women? And just to kind of the, 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 um, the pattern, or do you know? I mean, how do you do this as a whole family, or is this only for men? My, my wife is somewhere right now saying, please, God, don't let him talk about women. Uh, <laughs> but but I, I, there's certainly the core idea that we have to have community, that you have to figure out how a woman thinks, what she's meant to do, and pass it to the next generation. I mean, I can speak to that degree, yeah, yeah, yeah. but it's a, it's a different, slightly different thing for women, obviously. No, 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 I know. I'd figure it out. You know, because men are so fundamental and practical and physical, it, it, it's got a different approach. But I, the the core idea certainly give me is, the is give me the f give me the four principles. Manly men do manly things. It's not about internals primarily. It's about the doing. Give me that. Does that mean I have to go out and chop wood? No, no. It's not. We're not trying to go back to wagon train days. We're simply trying to find out what is it. What are the things a man's meant to do, and let's do them. What we've told men is that you've got to feel a certain way, or you've got to get over a wound for a whole bunch of decades before you can actually be a man. Those things will come sometimes in scripture and in history. We learn that the doing comes first, the feelings and uh, other things come later. So manly men do manly things, and if you just get men focused on the doing, the rest will follow. Okay. Number two. The second is manly men tend their field. Uh, there's, a field, there's a field assigned to you. Uh, this word comes from the Greek, a, a, a space assigned to you. In your case, you know, it's a, it's a television a, a, you know, network and it's your appearances, your family, your house, your yard, your bushes, your dog. You know, it's, it's, it's whatever, whatever, it whatever is you're responsible you have, for. Right. You could be a, a college kid in a dorm room with a car, rusty out, rusty that out, one rusty out is, car to bed. You that, know? One is so, <clears throat> that one is so universal <clears throat> and so much trouble because most people are looking, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> over their fence, mm -hmm. and they're looking at somebody else's field. No, 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 look at your field. Yeah, and the great principle of manhood is your field grows as you tend what right. you already have. That's how increase comes, right. once you're tending what you've got. And of course, the whole, the whole sort of negative Bubbitt stereotype of a man is that he's sitting in his recliner, you know, shouting for another beer while everything in his house goes to hell. And the re reality is that a man begins to be a man when he says, this is the field assigned to me, both out of love for my family and, and the people that I'm around, and God, I'm going to tend my field. And that's, that's really where manliness begins. Number three. Number three is manliness men make manly men. What you were just saying about your son, uh, we, you know, we aren't going to change manhood in this country primarily with seminars, books, and teaching. I hate to say that because I write, but, but that's not primarily how it's going to happen. It's going to happen by osmosis. It's going to happen as we build a manly culture wherever it is that we have the opportunity to do that, in a break room, in a church, in a park with guys who work in a company or on a construction site, wherever there's a culture. Culture, and that's what brings the young into it. The young are not going to be going to seminars and watching videos. The young are, are want to be around men and absorb manhood viscerally. Don't you uh, think that they're men. starving for it, though? There's no question. I think I think I think anybody from eight to eighty is starving. Yes. Starving for yes. it. Just I just what I'm a man. It's okay. Yeah. And it doesn't mean that I you know burp and fart and and get drunk. 
Yeah. That doesn't, that's not what manhood is about. Well, that's, not what, that's not the impression you get watching TV and watching TV commercials. But, but men are starting to react against that. I, I've spoken to men, even on an airplane today. Man, I just happened to bring up the fact of the television commercials. He said, those things make me so angry. Every middle-aged white guy looks terrible and uh, stereotypes about Asians. Everybody is Homer Simpson. Every man is an idiot. Mm -hmm. Every man's an idiot who's doing a happy dance because they found mm -hmm. the remote in the couch. Yeah. And the, the people are starting to react against that, and they need to know the practical steps, and hopefully we're providing some of them. And number four. Number four is manly men live to the glory of God. Manly men live to the glory of God. Uh, the, the reality is you can't do what you're made to do as a man without God's power, grace, and you can't do it if you're living for applause in this life, so you've got to live for the applause of heaven. And that's why the anchor of your vision and purpose really is with God. People will have a, um, um, not this crowd, but a lot of people will take, uh, say, oh, I don't need that. That's not, Im that's not important. Ben Franklin said to Thomas Paine, you know, um, you might not need that framework, but most people do. Yes. Um, I can tell you that there is no way I would be the man I am today if it wasn't for my faith in God. Yeah. And that I know he redeemed me, and I know I can never pay for it or anything else, but I wish to serve him. Mm -hmm. I wish to be worthy. You know what I mean? Yes. And so it's what keeps my feet on the straight and narrow and, and, mm -hmm. and, and, and quite honestly motivates me to do the things that I do because I yeah. feel a greater responsibility. Well, and people can watch you and me as, as, as Christians and people of faith and, and, they, and they can say, well, they, that's, what, that's where these guys are oriented. But there was a very, very well-known female scholar at Columbia University who wrote a book called The Feminization of America. And she said that when the religious underpinning of this country was lost, that's when a vision for valiant manhood was lost. Now, I don't know where, where she is religiously, but she's a senior professor at Vanderbilt, or at least, I mean, to Columbia at least was. And that's, that's the message. That's what you're saying. It's when you reclaimed your faith, reclaimed yourself in faith, uh, that you began to, to even want to be a man. Because you don't have, you know, um, it stops you from being the, I want it now. I want it now, and I want it because it makes me feel good. And who are you to, I, yeah. that I want, you know what I mean? You, you spend, I think, we have bought the law, the lie of, well, we can have it now, and you don't have to work for it or whatever, where most of my life, I kind of feel like, geez, you know, well, someday maybe I'll do what I want to do. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But there's, sure. there's something valiant in yeah. that. Not, not if you're bitching about it all exactly. the time. Exactly, exactly. And the good news is, being a man is such a powerful thing. Manhood is a powerful thing that if it doesn't have the checks, the boundaries, the ethics, uh, an eternal vision, it, it becomes destructive. It becomes more than just a bunch of guys sitting at the strip club. Uh, it becomes destructive, damaging, and that power is unleashed for false and evil purposes. And that's why you see young men doing a horrible damage to the lives of women, themselves, and others. So when we start getting that power back in the boundaries, something awesome will happen. Okay, I want you to um, put in somebody's Christmas stocking, this book, um, because I have a feeling, if you would be so kind to come back, I have a feeling we're going to be doing a lot with this book next year. Um, and I don't make a dime off of this book. Really important book. Um, Mansfield's Book of Manly Men. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you.